How are we doing, guys? Welcome to another away fan show. This week is going to be Chelsea after the, let's just say, controversial game last night against Stockport, only winning on penalties. Chelsea's up next. We have um, that Chelsea podcast on with us today. Um, so we'll bring him in now. Hi, mate. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's nice to be on. Yes, I'm glad you can come on. Um, so, firstly, we'll talk a bit of like Chelsea's season, how it's gone already, and a bit like, obviously, you've got a new, a new owner now, and he's kind of trying to spend the money as much as he can to kind of push Chelsea to the top two or top three. But what's your kind of take on Chelsea at the moment, mate? Yeah, it's, it's pretty up in the air at the moment. It's quite hard to draw conclusions about Chelsea so far, because a lot can change in these next two or three weeks. It's been an interesting start to the season. Saturday was obviously uh, did not go to plan at all. <laughs> Sunday even did not go to plan at all. So yeah, that was a boss, but down to a lot. It's it's really hard to kind of gauge the mood and kind of just the general feeling around Chelsea because it just like can change from like week to week. And you know, you get a transfer update or we we sign this player and all of a sudden the mood's a bit different or you know this deal falls through etc or it stalls and it changes again or you know we have a good result or a good performance then we we don't and it's it's still very much up in the air so it's quite you obviously you know we're playing now in august but i think come by the time the transfer window is closed we'll probably have a better more accurate picture of what chelsea kind of look like and can achieve this season yeah um and then where did you finish last season sorry uh yeah we came third last season third last season and do you before the season started did you kind of had any ideas of where you want to finish this season would you try and get into the top two or are you still for yourself with kind of the losing the likes of rudiger but then bringing the likes of sterling in are you more hopeful of this season going forward or do you reckon it was maybe yeah. be a backwards move no nah, it was one of those i think Ultimately, Chelsea have lost two centre-backs in Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen. And at the moment, they have only replaced one. In that yeah. defensive part of the pitch, they have clearly got weaker. Towards back end of last season, Chelsea's defence started creaking a little bit. Thiago Silva is now, again, one season older. Cesar Spaqueta, who is still at the club, who wanted to leave and is now, you know, on a new two-year deal. It's still, you know, it's still quite interesting, quite tough to say where Chelsea will finish. Raheem Sterling, you know, on paper, anyway, seems like a good good addition. You know, after see, he's still been he's kind of feeling the consequences of the current Chelsea setup at the moment in his first three games. My general expectations weren't really any different to last year because you know at the end of the day we kind of got to essentially replace what we've lost. Yeah. You know, last summer, so we've not really you know we're still trying to do that, and obviously we're trying to do that with a certain Wesley Fofana, which probably oh, which isn't yeah. going down too great down with uh. you guys. But yeah, it's um, it's it's one of those. I think before the start of the season, I think I had us. You know, it was tough because again, the, this, we did our season preview show before you know the season started. Before we signed Marco Corona, I think I had us down as fourth just because I thought, well, Spurs, you know, with Conte, we don't know. But then we absolutely played Spurs off the pitch, and then obviously controversial reasons didn't get the win. So, I, but then we just got battered the lead. So I don't know. I kind of had us battling, you know, in another unfortunately another top four battle. I I never at any point thought we'd close the gap on the top two. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk a bit more about. Not that that big issue at the moment, but too sure. Um, what call, what's your kind of take on your manager? Because again, like you say, with the issues going on in that Spurs game, the was I don't know what issues you had going into the, the Leeds game. Obviously, to lose three 0 But what is your kind of take on him at the moment? On our side, is a lot worse in manager manager managerial side. But for you, what's your kind of take on Tuchel at the moment? Yeah, and that is just, it's one of the, there's not really any reasons to have any concerns. I think last season, what Chelsea went through, what he had to answer as a manager was questions he, Frank, quite frankly, shouldn't have had to. And during a pretty tough time, he, you know, stood up, you know, gave a great, you know, uh, image of himself, represent the fans well, represent the club well. And I think in that time, respect for him grew. Obviously, last year, out that's last season could have looked so much different than it did. We were inches away yeah. from winning two, two finals. Um, so, but still, you know, Tuchel's in still in pretty good standing at Chelsea. Um, but obviously, given the fact that we don't have a director of football, he has kind of been handed the keys, you know, for transfers this summer. So there is kind of a lot of pressure on him to get things right. Because as I said, for all the brilliant work he's done, Chelsea's attack still, is miss still isn't firing very well. And that's one area of the pitch he's really struggled to address. And this season does kind of feel make or break in a sense of like what 
what, what are we going to do now? Because last season was kind of a caveat excuse of, well, what we went through with sanctions kind of derailed the season quite a lot and understandably yeah. so. But this season is kind of one new ownership. It's a new era. We don't quite know what to expect from them. Um, so far, it's been quite encouraging. But it's one of those with Tuchel where it's just like he's got to, you know, kind of just be on his game. We've just got to hope, just see what he can do. I don't think there's huge expectations. I, I don't think the expectations are too huge. It's kind of more of those just, you know, again, hopefully get top four and like start rebuilding the squad because we're seemingly happens this summer. This, this is the summer we're actually going to, Tuchel's going to finally sort of get to start rebuilding because up till this summer, he'd only had two signings in his time in charge of Chelsea. And one of them was Sal on loan. So it's, it's one of those, he's not really had the signings till this summer. So it's, yeah, the feeling still is still good on Tuchel, but at the same time, you're kind of wary that with Chelsea that, you know, anything could happen and it could just fall apart very soon. Yeah. And obviously going around in the transfer rumours as well, there's a lot of players kind of linked with you other than the Leicester man himself, but the likes of Abamyang, the likes of, I'm trying to think of all the other names, but there's so many people that are kind of linked with you at the moment. Is there anyone that you are going to say that are kind of confident you're going to sign this season or before the window does end? Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. You know, the Abamyang links are there. We will have to see what goes on with Barcelona. That club is kind of just unpredictable to kind of tell what, how that deal is going to play out. With them, obviously, there's the links to Anthony Gordon that aren't going away, which oh, is yes. Yes. slightly, so, yeah. I think, slightly concerning. Uh, it just feels a bit of a backwards, a backwards slash sideways move for Chelsea, given we have Callum Hudson Odoi, who came from our own youth academy system. You know, he's probably, probably more developed and probably, you know, despite him not playing as much as he'd have liked, probably, you know, more ready than Gordon. And, and, and Callum is someone we've struggled to develop. And you're kind of saying 60 million on Anthony Gordon, who is pretty raw to kind of go, mm. you know, to try and develop him. It just seems quite a big gamble as well. Given that we've, you know, Christian Pulisic and Kai Havertz, who we spent money on, who were, you know, a lot more progressed in their careers than him, but still need developing. And we've struggled with them at 60 million on Anthony Gordon just seems that well, it, he's clearly not worth 60 million. He's worth 60 million to Everton, which is why we're kind of getting yes. the, the rumoured prices. But it's just one of those where I'm kind of hoping you know, and I'm not going to say I'll speak for all Chelsea fans, but for a few Chelsea fans, well, I'm hoping Everton kind of save us from ourselves and, and Gordon does does fall through. But as I say, I, I honestly can tell you who I'm confident of getting. As I said, I think Fafana is just a case of agreeing a fee. It kind of just seems like, unfortunately, for you guys at this point, if a fee can be agreed, then it will go because he's you know not in your first team. He's kind of training with the mm-hmm. under-23s. His head's not right. He team just doesn't want to be at Leicester. So it's kind of just getting the fee. That would be the one if there's a deal to be done, but I'm most confident about But Honestly, I don't know, because we could get a deal come out of nowhere. Kaladu Koulibaly just came out of nowhere. And then within about 24, 48 hours of like that news breaking, it was done. So it's really hard to say. Yeah, um, and like you were saying about players that are kind of getting overpriced because of what clubs ex- like are pricing them at. Um, I think that's the same with Fafana, because for us, I think me, um, opinion based is that I don't think he will go. And I've got bets of other fans saying that I don't think he'll go, and they will get they'll get money if he does go. But I don't know. There was uh, it's just when they when they said they won a record kind of record uh, signing price for him, I was like, I don't think Chelsea are going to reach that price. They're going to want to pay that high, but they're not going to want to hit that mark where it calls a high to the world record signing for me. And I, with the like I said, with the likes of you going for someone like Anthony Gordon at sixty mil, it's like. Are you really going to put all that money in him instead of going out for just one man in Fafana? And what is your kind of take on this Fafana thing? Because, again, he's not playing in the squad. It does look like he wants to go. But do you really think you're going to push over the 80 million mark for him? I mean, if we don't, Wesley Fafana is left in an incredibly awkward position yes. and how he kind of rectifies his Leicester career from here on is very tricky. So I guess for his sake, I hope we do it. Look, Again, I do not think 80 million or whatever is reported for Wesley Fafana is a true representation of his value. Yeah. But when you leave your business so late, once the season started, he's clearly an important player to you. He's, he is clearly a good defender. And who knows, maybe in five years' time, he will be an 80 million pound defender. So maybe we, by doing that now, just bite the bullet now and go for it. As I said, we need a right centre back at the yeah. moment because I mean, there's bizarre rumours of Trevor Chalobah going out on loan, which I, I can't really get behind. But if that's the case, you know, then if Fafana's not coming in, then we've got three centre backs with Reese James and Mark Cucurella being able to fill in. We do kind of need that, that right centre back in, and we need Wesley Fafana. So 
look, I, it might <laughs> uh, it might just be one that just drags and drags and just gets really annoying. And then who knows? Maybe it's one of those that doesn't even get done till deadline day, just because eventually that's like they've just got it's just got to be done. Um, I say it's, it's obviously must be a pretty horrible situation, you know, for you guys at Leicester losing, you know, a top top player, and it's it obviously the way he's gone about it is not great. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'd say, you know, Fafana is probably the one, I say, the one we're hopefully most likely to get done, but I honestly don't know. And as I said, if if we're rumoured to be wanting to pay 60 million for Anthony Gordon, then I, then I don't see why we wouldn't pay 80 million for Wesley Fafana or, you know, get break that record because, you know, Chelsea, I mean, Chelsea been spending 15, 20 million on, you know, Serie A, and a, a Serie A boy from Inter Milan and, and yeah. Carney Chukwameka from Aston Villa. You know, there's not, there doesn't seem to really be any you know fear of just splashing money whether it's worth it or not so we'll, we'll just have to see it kind of just feels like we're just going all in this summer and just seeing what happens so you know i wouldn't rule you know i i think i wouldn't rule a chelsea out breaking a record bid for fafana because ultimately i don't see what other options we've got if we don't go for yeah. it you know we had we could have had jules kunde and we fumbled you know we fumbled about we went to nathan ake and then we said and then you know that didn't happen then we went back to kunde and he was understandably annoyed and that didn't go through and then all of a sudden fafana came out of nowhere and it kind of felt okay, well, maybe we're kind of failing upwards with this bizarre transfer strategy, but we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, and I think uh, the only other reason why I think he, I don't see him going is because you've all, again apparently you put another bid in the last few days or even hours um, for about seventy million plus add-ons, and we rejected that. And it's like it's like Chelsea kind of in a way are trying to lowball it as much as they can yeah. until we kind of go, okay, that's, that's dealable, I guess. Um, but I, I, I can't see Leicester selling for less than 80 million, but going into the game on Saturday, then um, in my eyes, I think we've got a lot more hope going into this game this weekend, just because of two reasons. Firstly, you did get a bit of a slaughtering three nil. And second of all, you lost probably your, only main centre back in that team. Obviously, you've got your new only player three at the back. I don't know who else you've got in that sort of position now. You've lost someone like Colwell as well. Um, but what's your kind of take going into Saturday's match? Well, I mean, I kind of looked this up before, and you've actually Leicester have actually got a re- pretty good record at Stamford Bridge in recent years. I kind of looked it up. I think Chelsea have only beaten Leicester once at Stamford Bridge since 2016. Oh, okay. So I know, we've I, look, got, I know we've had a few draws at the, in the it past. It tends to be it tends to be one-one draws. So I mean, that'll be a fairly good score prediction for this game, I think. But yeah, I so say I think you've got you obviously got the one win at Stamford Bridge, and I think about twenty eighteen. But um, aside from that, it tends to be one-one draws. And then obviously there was that you know two-one win for us after after you beat us in the cup final, but which kind of you know secured or you know played a big part in us getting top four over you guys that season. So yeah, Leicester of a week. It's one of those where. Defensively, I don't think we're as solid as as you know we were at the beginning under Tuchel. I think under Tuchel in our first thirty Premier League games, we conceded seventeen goals, and in the next thirty, we've conceded thirty four. Leicester are still yeah. an attacking threat. I mean, obviously, defensively, you're not great. You lead goals for fun this season. So again, yes. if you I'd, even with Chelsea's misfiring attack, I'd struggle to see us not scoring at the weekend. So it's just one of those games. Leicester, is, you know, I think your your league position. I mean, you play three games. I think it's at one point. So. But it's Leicester. There's quality in that team. Yeah. There's brilliant players in that team. So you've you've got a decent, you've got a good chance of getting something at Stamford Bridge because Stamford Bridge is not a fortress as it used to be. You yeah. know, we may not lose too often at home, but there's still quite a few draws for any of their teams to get results. So, I mean, if I was Leicester fan, I, you know, I would. It's it's not as depressing a fixture as it looked a week ago. Certainly, it's probably not even as depressing a fixture as going somewhere like Tottenham or Arsenal right now. So it's yeah. It's one of those ways. I think, you know, there's reason to have hope. Obviously, you know, it just it depends what Chelsea turn up as well. And I said, we have no Kaladu Koulibaly to spend. Uh, we've got no Kaladu Koulibaly because he's spent it. So it'll be interesting to see what we do with that left-sided centre-back role. Yeah. Um, who else in that sort of defence do you have kind of as, as replacements? Because, again, you lost Rudiger, you've lost Christiansen. Who else have you got? Are there, is there any youngsters in the actual like, defending centre-backs? Or well, are I you going to be using someone like Reese James in there like you have been the last few weeks? Well, I'd imagine if Reese plays, it would tend to be on the right sided centre back role. That's where he's played. But I mean, you're kind of making someone like Trevor Chalaber could maybe fill in. He's just been an unused sub though in these first three games, and there's talks of him going on loan. Obviously, we did Mark Cucurella from Brighton can fill in there. The only issue with that is it's then kind of putting a lot of pressure on Ben Chilwell starting at left wing back to kind mm. of you know is he ready to really start? Because we saw him start against Everton and he looked 
you know, as you kind of expect, fairly rusty off the back of a of a long injury, and he was okay. He won a penalty. He was average. He was nothing more. And then against obviously Spurs, he, he was an unused sub. And then I think against Leeds, he came on late on just for some minutes. But so it's a tough one. You know, there is, yeah, who we go for. I'd like to see someone like Trevor Chalobah get a start there because he was pretty good for Chelsea last season. Um, under Thomas Tuchel, he's kind of one of the breakthrough stars of last season. So it has been a bit disappointing hearing all the news of him getting linked with a move away. But it honestly wouldn't surprise me if we saw someone like Mark Cucurato starting at left centre-back of the weekend, which I'm probably not the, the biggest fan of, but I kind of get it. But it's it's just a bit of a risk. Yeah, I understand that as well. And I've just thought as well, Kante, is yeah. he injured? Yeah, so we, we're without Kante. Mateo Kovacic was back God. in training. So we'll see what happens. But as I say, you know, if Kovacic is fit to start, but we may well be looking at a Jorginho, Conor Gallagher midfield too, which had its fair few, you know, problems against Leeds of the weekend. Or who knows, maybe Thomas Tuchel, you know, puts Rube, uh, Ruben lost the cheek in the middle, you know, puts Reese out to wing back and someone like Aspilicueta starts right centre back or something, or Trev plays right centre back and you've got Kukurella left centre back or something. It's, it's, yeah, it's something, yeah, obviously we we'll have to see. We obviously, this is recorded before Tuchel's done his press conference, yeah. etc. So we don't know how fit Kovacic is, but he was back in training. So we'll have to see whether he's fit to start or if he's only fit enough uh, to come off the bench. So from what you're kind of saying at the moment, then with all these kind of issues of injuries and uh, players be obviously being um, out of the team because of red cards and whatnot, are you not so hopeful going for going to Saturday than you are nor like you would normally going in? Uh, it's tough because less, as I said, as I said earlier, like for whatever reason, less to get a result at Stamford Bridge. Uh, I think in general, like the away side tends to do quite well in this fi- these fixtures. Like we, yeah. I mean, we won we won at the King Power last season. You know, obviously we won oh, at King Power. Man. We won at the King Power under under Frank and the Cup. Like and we, t- you know, we tend to we have got some results there. Um, so it's tough. I mean, I don't know. I've got I've got confidence in us because I know Chelsea on their day are like more than good enough to win this game. Um, but I just don't. You just don't know what Chelsea are going to turn up because the Chelsea that turn up against Spurs were brilliant. Mm. They played Spurs off the park. Spurs who you know were tipped by some in the media to actually go to Stamford Bridge and win. You know, and Chelsea played them off the park, and then in the space of you know a week, they were a shadow of themselves against Leeds. You didn't recognise that team, and the performance dropped so much. I, I I struggle to believe that just because of one injury to N'Golo Kante. So it, it honestly just depends. I think the players will probably be fired up after what happened last week. They better be. So uh, look, it, it's just one of those. I I can't really like. I feel like I feel confident. I'm always going to feel fairly confident in, in a Chelsea game normally. You know, unless it's a team got a horrendous record against like a bogey ground. But I just don't know. Like as I said, I think we we can win this game. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if this game is a draw. Like it wouldn't surprise me at all yeah. if this game is a draw because that's just how Chelsea Leicester games have tended to go over the last few years. Yeah, I guess so. And then I'll quickly before we do go, then I will say your prediction for the scoreline, which you've probably already said a couple of times. But I'm, yeah. I'll give you another chance to give you what you want. I'll, my heart will say two one Chelsea. My head will say one one. That that's what we'll okay. go with. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, and actually, I will ask you before you go. What's your kind of outside take on Leicester at the moment? Because with everything going on with transfers, I don't know if you know too much about kind of the whole situation in general, but what is your kind of take with the manager as well with everything going on at Leicester? Yeah, I mean, it just does kind of feel that Leicester has just gone a bit stagnant. There was a lot of excitement. I think your first in two seasons you had under Rodgers in like 19, 20 and 2021 were like real causes of optimism. And then last season, you know, I guess, um, as maybe you didn't take the next step with recruitment, then you kind of just, you know, petered out and other team strengthened and you kind of just fell back down to maybe kind of a place we'd normally expect of Leicester. It just does feel, I mean, yes. again, forgive me for you've not made any like outfield signings. Are you still the yeah. only Prem team not to make an outfield? Yes. Like, I mean, and before yes. you had, and there was a point, you know, you, you, you know, before you signed your goal, goalkeepers or whatever, you, hadn't even, you were the only club in the AFL or something not to sign a, a player. So it's been interesting. Obviously, I know there's been links with you guys losing James Madison potentially. I think he's an absolutely brilliant player. So I'm like, for your sake, you know, obviously Tottenham will link with him. So I'm glad he's, you know, that's not, that move's not going on. And I know Tielemans, I think is in his, one of his last years of his contract and kind of feels like this is his last season with you guys. Obviously you've got the fun of this situation. It does kind of feel like a bit bleak and a bit grim. And you kind of feel like from the outside, it feels like Leicester have kind of got as far as they're going to get. And then obviously I know with Rogers, like, I don't know if it's carried on into this season, but I know last season you had this horrendous record, just conceding from set pieces. Mm-hmm. You would always concede. And that's not been sorted out. And defensively, you're still you're leaking goals. So it's it's one of those with Leicester. Like there's quality in that team, and so it's one of those. Despite you being, I think, in relegation zone, I don't see you guys being involved in a relegation scrap at all. No. You'd kind of be fine. You'd probably be like a mid-table. You maybe mid-table getting a bit of form top half. 
who knows you may get one of those results like against the top half side you know like you beat liverpool last year etc you might still get one of those results for still quality in my team it just depends i i don't know what you know the ambitions of of Leicester because again I saw like a tweet the other day I'm not sure how accurate it was there was a talk of like Leicester being sold to an American consortium I'm not sure how accurate oh, that was at all if that was just I fake think, news or anything I think that so, was very very fake but this oh, is yeah. because there's so many issues going wrong with the club at the moment everyone kind of makes rumours up of yeah. even the little things like Fafana actually putting in a transfer request which just didn't happen even though yes terms like personal terms are agreed now he didn't officially make any sort of kind of request to be leaving the club. And there's just so much going on. I think the main issue really is before the window opened, we had so many players in the squad over the 25-man squad on such high wages, the likes of Bertrand, Vestergaard, Pratt, um, Chowdhury, who now have... We've got a few gone, but there's still quite a big bunch of players that... We are on so high wage, we just can't afford to bring anyone in. And that is the main reason why we might have to sell for Farner to get the few players that Rogers kind of wants in before the window. But at this point, another reason why I don't think Farner's going to go is because I don't think we're going to get a chance to spend that 80 million if it does come in. So there's so many things going wrong at the moment with the club. But I just hope going on to Saturday we can get a positive result in some way hopefully a win but I I can't see it there's so many things wrong so I just hope it, it all turns around I guess but I appreciate you coming on mate um can you tell us where we could find you so anyone can look you up yeah sure so I mean we're on Twitter at that Chelsea pod just standard we're on any podcast platform providers, but not on YouTube, etc. Just any podcast providers, Apple, Spotify, etc. Just search that Chelsea podcast. It just tends to be, you know, just a match review. Just you know, one once a week. It's nothing too, you know, outlandish. Nothing too. So there's not loads and loads of content there, but just one a week. We'll get different, you know, guests on, whether that be you know journalists or just different people, you know, content creators or just fellow fans from across the globe. Just once a week, looking back at the game. So you know, if, if there's any Chelsea fans that are tuning into this and they've not heard of us before coming in or look if there's any Leicester fans you know and you want to just make a bookmark of in case you get a win on Saturday <laughs> you want to you want to listen to a Chelsea fan probably moan about us you know a, a praising Leicester venture sure, check us out but uh, it's been a pleasure no worries mate and um I ca- well, hopefully we can catch you on the home leg at some point um so I appreciate you coming on mate no of course if you want me on again just let me know it's been a pleasure yeah no worries cheers thank you and that's it guys Appreciate you all coming on um, for the away fan show. Chelsea on Saturday at Stamford Bridge. Hopefully we can get a result after a terrible start in the Premier League. Hopefully we can get to four points in the league instead of it being still one. Um, And that is it. Appreciate you coming on and we'll catch you all on the next away fan show. Appreciate it.